Hello, all you flight haulers, flight cargo haulers out there, and flight simmers. Commander Kingfish here, and I am back in air hauler. So today's uh, episode, we are going to cover some of the stuff prior to my summer vacation. So I just want to announce now that uh, this will be the last air hauler episode until September, mid-September. I'm getting ready to take off on my summer vacation up to my pilgrimage to Alaska. So I'll be uh, traveling here in another uh, week or so taking off. And obviously I can't take my desktop computer, which has uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and my air hauler on it. So I'll be explaining more about my summer programming coming up here a little later in the week with, let's see, I'll have a uh, kind of a two to three minute video just talking about what uh, pro or what games I have uh, managed to pre-record and I'll be releasing throughout the summer. Okay, so let's get to Air Hauler. Today's going to be kind of an interesting uh, episode. Uh, I'll cover Air Hauler, which is not going to be out of the ordinary as far as Air Hauler goes, but my flight is going to be a little bit different. I'll be taking off from Cheyenne a Regional Airport here in Wyoming and traveling over to Laramie, which is home. So we'll be covering all of that during the flight. All right, so let's uh, take a look at, we're gonna start with the company finances. And you can see that we are over 20 million. I think if I look back at the last episode, we were over 13 million. So the last two weeks have been pretty productive. i managed to uh, push this uh, cash flow up and it's gonna be important because obviously we're not gonna be flying at all and the pilots are not gonna be flying through the summer. They all get a summer vacation as well. So we're gonna still have monthly overhead, but by the time it gets done, I shouldn't spend much more than a little over a million dollars or so for well, maybe about $1.2 million in monthly bills. And so we still should have plenty of money when I get back into the September uh, episode. So that's going to be our finances for the summer. And I think uh, we're going to do pretty good. I'll have a few more days here before I leave. Probably another uh, three, three days or so of being able to have the pilots fly. So we should be in pretty good shape. So that was the finances, talking about the summer. Let's see, current, we go over to operations. We can see that uh, I've got uh, all of the pilots going and we've added two new aircraft. Actually, they're not necessarily new. You know me, I am uh, always buying them off the secondary market. But I added two new uh, M20Rs and I've replaced, or I will be selling the Jabiru's. That's going to be the next thing we do. Uh, but I've got those replaced, and those are flying now. Morgan and Louie have the uh, M20Rs. They carry more capacity, uh, cargo space, and uh, fly faster for sure. Uh, I'm looking for another one so that I can replace the Skyhawk. And then uh, those are the going to be our starting aircraft when I hire new pilots. And as I get to the bigger aircraft and I promote everybody up, these will be the uh, starting aircraft for the new wannabes that I hire. And so they'll start on, on in those aircraft. So speaking of the aircraft, let's go ahead and make the commitment of selling these aircraft. And you do that by highlighting the aircraft then you got to sell aircraft in lease tab right here. Now, one of the things you can't really make a lot of money on buying and selling aircraft. He's uh, the developer has that built in so that you can't kind of do an exploit on that. Personally, I think uh, fairness would be that if you bought an aircraft and you used it for 30 to 60 days and then you sold it after that, then you could at least get uh, maybe 85 or 90% of the value of the aircraft. But 
the way it's set up now, you can only get 50% of the value. So it's not like you can buy an aircraft, repair it up to 100% and then sell it for that. Uh, you're still only going to get 50%. So you're going to end up losing money if you're going to try to do that. But we got a lot of good use out of this aircraft. So I am not uh, concerned about the amount of money that I'm going to get for selling it. Uh, they're just a little bit slower, small aircraft. You can't carry that much cargo in them, but they did serve a pretty good purpose. So let's go ahead and sell this Jabiru. And it's going to ask us, do we want to sell it? You'll receive 26,000. Yeah, see, that's not even, I think that's even a quarter of the value. I'll have to look, but I don't think that that's, well, it might be 50%. Anyway, yes, we want to sell it. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. Because uh, I think part of the, the game or air hauler itself generates loads kind of based on that aircraft wherever it's sitting at so let's go ahead and sell this other one and let's go ahead and sell this one and yes we want to receive this aircraft we or we want to sell this aircraft uh we'll receive twenty four thousand. so let's go ahead and sell it and i think if we go over to the market new market value and we look at the jabiru's which are down here at the bottom right here there are 89,000 so we're not even getting 50% of the value so you just want to kind of be thinking about that as you are buying and selling aircraft and then I think if you still have a pilot assigned to an aircraft that you sell you lose that pilot so you want to make sure that uh, you don't have any pilots assigned to your aircraft if you want to keep that pilot all right so let's uh that was fleet so we just covered that and uh now the next thing i wanted to go over is ai fuel there seemed to be some confusion about that and i was confused about it if you look at what i have here i you'll see my current fuel at one pound well, I did a lot of research looking into the forums and I found that the developer has kind of built in that the fuel on your AI pilots don't really matter much. They calculate the distance, however you're going to fly. So it will buy the appropriate amount of fuel once it reaches its destination. I was always wondering why my if we go over here to available cargo why all of my jobs were always just a little bit more on most part as far as quantity that my pilots could fly with and i kind of determined now that it's because of that difference in the amount of fuel if we go back over here to the buy sell you'll see that it has a cargo capacity so if we go over to, let's find it right here. Uh, well, we can go to the Cirrus. I've got two or three Cirruses. So you can see that the cargo capacity is 1252. So I've got one pound left in my Cirrus. And so I'm at uh, 1251. And so when we come back over here to the available cargo jobs, you'll see that they are a lot closer to being able to fly those cargo jobs. And that was the difference. That's why I was finding a problem with trying to match my cargo jobs to my aircraft. So I made that change. And so it's something you might want to look at. Now, that's entirely up to you. You can keep fuel on board if you feel that that takes away from the realism. I'm not that concerned about it. It just makes it a little bit easier in regards to being able to load these jobs out and get the pilots off and flying. So that's a little bit on the AI fuel, something you can play around with. So now, factories. And if we do, let's see. So I've got all my factories here. I got my jewelry factory. And matter of fact, I 
taken a couple of missions, so I've got some uh, jewelry that's being processed. I've got the textiles that's got the clothing, the designer, and I've talked a little bit about that. What I really want to show on the factories, and if we open it up, you know me, the good old spreadsheet, we have my factories are all making money. Now, I don't have these factories here, the tool factory, and I believe that's auto parts, AP, I abbreviated that, automotive parts, yeah. So I don't have those factories built, but the jewelry factory is now making money. And so uh, that's the same with my cosmetics factory. It is now making money my clothing is getting close i'm not quite making money with the clothing uh it is still covering the cost of startup and the clothing cost here you can see the clothing and then the designer clothing so the clothing factory is getting close there was a couple of missions out there but i decided not to take those today pretty short turnaround times i didn't want to mess with those so hopefully by the time uh, this uh, I'm done before I take off for the summer that maybe I'll have these making money we'll see but again uh, by tracking these and again I'll disclaimer here I make things probably more difficult you can make them I enjoy doing spreadsheets setting this stuff up managing it and but you air hauler can be as simple as just you flying cargo you don't even have to hire pilots you can just uh, build yourself up and have your own plane and you can just fly from base to base and sell cargo or transport cargo and just be that simple or you can make it as complicated as you want so don't let my spreadsheets and stuff scare you off from air hauler i have a lot of fun with it set of factories is my radios my plastics, my memory sticks, and they are all now making money. So they've all covered their startup costs. So those have been pretty productive, as you can see. And so factories are a pretty good thing. I was always kind of concerned about those, trying to keep track and thought that factories, or at least what I had read in the forums, that factories weren't always that profitable and they if you're not doing the missions then they will not be profitable because uh, there's no place to sell without doing the missions so i have uh, managed to look for my when i set up my factories i tried to find places that had enough material so i don't have to worry about hauling materials in on my factories i can just buy the factories at that airport and so I've managed to set these things up so that uh, in the case of memory sticks and radios, they require plastics, which plastics you have to build or you have to use chemicals. And I've managed to find El Paso, which has almost the cheapest chemicals in the world. So something to kind of keep in mind. Plus, they have a lot of resources okay and now that's factories oh the other thing i wanted to point out too is i'm doing a lot of current missions and of course i had to add another tab to keep track of my current missions so today i accepted these two missions for jewelry and so what i've done is on this particular tab i've built in i've got tabs set up so that i can just pull in whatever i need uh, as far as what commodity that I am building and this is all the stuff that I am uh, that uh, is producible in a factory and so right now I'm using jewelry uh, the uh, quantity is based on the mission itself and the factory that's being built at the airport that it's got to get delivered to uh, I can assign so I know which pilot I'm going to assign to that. Uh, I don't have these assigned yet because I'm not sure who's going to end up there. I still got to get it produced. What stage it's in. Is it in 
production, which this one currently is. Do I have to buy materials? In some cases, I do have to purchase materials from somewhere. Uh, is it in ready to ship? Is it in route or has it been delivered? And so it really makes it a lot easier. I can take a glance at this and know what's going on because before I was trying to write it down on paper to keep track of all of this and I was losing track of them, building more products than I needed to, that sort of thing. So I did, this just helps me track it. I also have a day calculator, number of days left for this mission to, to get it delivered. So that was new on the spreadsheet. Everything else is pretty much the same. And so that's, that's the spreadsheet. And I am uh, using it pretty effectively. All right, back to air hauler. So with doing all of those missions, we have managed to, uh, let's get over here. Where did it go? Base, base, uh, company info. So if we look at our missions reputation, it's up at 100%, which has moved our overall reputation up to 80%, which is a good thing. At some point we may want to take a loan out and that means a lower interest rate. And it also means better jobs, better missions, better cargo jobs, and all of that. So that is the missions. Uh, we covered the spreadsheet. We covered all of that. We've sold the plane. We know what our company finances are. So I think that was everything that I wanted to cover in air hauler itself today. So today we're going to fly over to Laramie. We are in Wyoming. This is my home state. Uh, I moved the aircraft up to Cheyenne. And so we're just going to take a short little flight from Cheyenne over to Laramie. And today, instead of having a uh, fast time lapse, uh, I'm going to point a few places out. It's only a 28 minute flight. We're only 46 nautical miles from uh, Cheyenne over to Laramie where we'll be landing. And we're not gonna build a base there today. We're gonna build a base there in September when I get back, because there's no reason to build a base and then just pay for that monthly rent. Uh, when uh, we can just wait because we're not really going to get much benefit out of it here the next few days. So let's see. So I think what I need to do is go over to the fleet and go over to my aircraft. And I need to position or fly this aircraft myself. So let's go ahead and set this up. And we are going to be flying over to... What is it? Uh, I wrote it down here. I should know it by heart, you would think. K-L-A-R, which is Laramie, Wyoming. And we're going to use that. Uh, I don't have any commodities here at Cheyenne that I can take over. Now, when I flew up from Alamosa, uh, I had a nice load of, what was it, perfume. And I think I made $36 per pound on the on that. So I made a nice uh, uh, chunk of change flying up from Alamosa up to Cheyenne. Fuel is good. Uh, we don't need to change any of that. It's just such a short flight. And I'm trying to burn some of this fuel off because I really loaded it up, I think, when I went from uh, El Paso up to Alamosa. Okay, so that's good. So let's click OK there. And yep, we're just going to go uh, from Cheyenne up to Laramie. If we do this like here, you'll see that. Again, the this flight plan does not translate over into Microsoft, so I just accept the flight at this point. And let's accept this. Okay. So we're gonna get that little bit of a beep. So I will see you over in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I just wanna point out the route real quick and then I'll hop into the cab. Okay, we are over here in the simulator, as you can see. Uh, let's scroll this back just a little bit. You can see I'm leaving from uh, Cheyenne 
we've got a couple of three points of interest on the way over that I'm going to talk about. And so that's why there won't be any time lapse. We're just going to be flying along today. So I just kind of wanted to show you what the route's going to be. Uh, we're going to be uh, flying from here over, uh, what is it? Uh, where'd my notes go? Uh, Warren Air Force Base. And then we're going to go over uh, Kurt Gowdy State Park. Then we're going to be flying near Vitavu, uh, Forest Service uh, Campground, and Rock Climbing Area. Uh, we're going to be flying around close to the uh, Lincoln Memorial on Highway I-80. And then from there on into Laramie and then getting ready to land. So once I am ready to take off, I'll uh, see you over in the cab. Okay, we are in the cab of the uh, M20R. I've got the altitudes all set. I've got the weights all set. Actually, uh, in this case, we don't have any load. So the air hauler has updated the fuel for us and the flaps are all set. So we're ready to take off. If you notice, I've got a nice clear day today. I wanted you to be able to kind of see some of the sights and not end up into the clouds. So let's go ahead and take off here. Let me kind of move my stuff around here and get my joystick over here. Okay. All right, let's uh, rev this thing up. And let's go ahead and take off. So Cheyenne features Frontier Days. It's their big, uh, basically, what well, it's like the fair uh, celebrations for the area. They bring in a lot of uh, musical groups. And so that happens in July. So I'm always gone when, when that happens. So I don't get a chance to ever come over and, and see or take advantage of it. All right, we should be able to lift off. There we go. Nice smooth takeoff. Bring our landing gear up. Now we're going to climb up to 11,000 feet. That should be enough to get us over the the hills there. Uh, that's between Cheyenne and Laramie. So let's get our pilot going and click that okay so that's a little bit about Cheyenne I think it's it's the capital of Wyoming and it has uh, I think somewhere around a hundred and hundred thousand hundred and ten thousand in population let's raise that flap and let's see so that's that's Cheyenne now we are flying over F.E. Warren Air Force Base. Now, a little bit about F.E. Warren uh, Air Force Base. It originally started in Civil War times as Fort D.A. Russell. And in 1946, the Army Corps took the base over and created a uh, aviation engineering school there. In 1947, the newly formed Air Force uh, took charge of the base and it was uh, has expanded ever since then and uh, let's hop outside the cab here uh, let me get this adjusted there we go that's a little better okay so yeah so it expanded during the Cold War in the 50s and became a strategic base for the ICBM missiles and it was controlled out of here with the crew for those uh, Cold War missiles. Now, I don't know if it is still doing, has control over that. It's still active. I know, I believe also the uh, B-12 was generated out of here or 
was flown out of here uh, as test flights for the war at towards the end of the war. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, uh, we should be heading. Well, we're still climbing. Let me hop back on in the cab here. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of climbing to do yet. But we should be... Let's see. We're not far from Kirk Gowdy State Park. So we'll do a little bit of flying. You can just kind of enjoy the scenery as we're heading over. And then uh, once we get over Kirk Gowdy, I'll uh, kind of talk about it. Here in the distance, you can see the reservoirs. This is part of Kirk Gowdy State Park. Now, it was named after Kirk Gowdy, uh, who was a, a Wyoming native. Uh, he was a national sportscaster and outdoorsman. And I remember watching a lot of his uh, American sportsman show uh, where he traveled around the world hunting and fishing all over the place and so he was a Wyoming native he was born in Green River which is along I-80 out there towards the western edge of Wyoming and then he was raised in Cheyenne where he uh, honed his uh, sports casting skills and whatnot so you can see the two main reservoirs uh, I have uh, did a little bit of fishing in both in particular this area right here now a friend of mine the Keithinator uh, and I uh, made quite a few trips over to here to visit and just uh, enjoy the park itself it's a beautiful park uh, quite a bit of uh, area to hike around in and to fish so it's a really nice park to take advantage of and it's only like a half hour from where I live And so that is where we were at. We just made the change here. We're going to be flying up past Vitavu Climbing Rocks area. It's kind of a sacred area for the native uh, American Indians. But it's also a very prominent rock climbing area. It's got some, I guess, some really nice granite structures that uh, a lot of rock climbers come from uh, all over the west to climb there at Vitavu. Uh It's got uh, Turtle Rock. There's a couple of other structures there. We've done some free climbing out there. Uh, the Keithinator and I, we visited that area, and we managed to uh, climb up. We couldn't get to the very top because you couldn't quite free climb all the way up to there. You need uh, ropes and whatnot to climb some of those other areas. But we were able to climb up uh, and get fairly high up in the uh, rock climbing area. It's a really nice area. A lot of places to hike in there. And so, uh, yeah, I would, uh, if you're ever out here, I would highly recommend uh, visiting Vitavu. 
so let's see. That uh, is uh, right here on the map for perspective. It's going to be right about this area here. And I'll kind of point out approximately as we're getting close. So we kind of just went while I was fiddling with the aircraft there. We, uh, Vita Vu is this area right back behind us here. Uh, so this is kind of the area where the Vita Vu is. We are now uh, flying over, or we just flew over this rest area right here. Uh, this is where the Lincoln Memorial Monument is, and it's the Wyoming informational center and rest stop it has a bust of abraham lincoln it was done by robert rusin and it stands 12 and a half feet tall resting on a 30 foot tall granite pedestal and it was originally done in 1959 so let's uh, come around right here uh, i need to hop in the cab and i need to well need to take care of some flying here real quick uh, we're gonna be landing down here pretty soon and so I might as well get the prop and we need to start coming down in elevation a little bit now that we're over the hump uh, let's engage that Come down we go and arm that uh, so we are coming into Laramie uh, next stop will be right there and then we're gonna swing around and come into the airport this turn when we make the turn should be approximately right over my house actually uh, where I live and so uh, if we kind of hop outside uh, that's going to be in this area right here. So this is Laramie, and it is home to the University of Wyoming Cowboys. And uh, the football team is part of the Mountain West, or the conference is part of the Mountain West Conference. And so they do pretty well. And there's our airport off over there. So we're going to be coming in around. Now there's two landing strips on here. But they do pretty well. Uh, I mean, at 7,200 foot elevation, uh, it's hard to get uh, folks here uh, or players to come. But they've, they've held their own in the Mountain West Conference. So anyway, that's uh, so we are just uh, making a turn over where I live. All right. So let me hop back inside the cab. And we are ever so slowly coming down. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, I need to actually. We're at ten thousand. We're going to be making another turn here. I think I actually need to. Let's go ahead and uh, start uh, taking over the aircraft here. And we should be at full prop. So, uh, need to start slowing down. Let me see how far off course I am. We need to be turning a little bit more here. And we are descending a little too fast there. All right. 
Well, let's start uh, leveling off here and cutting our speed and putting a flap down. And I think we should be starting to turn right about here. Swinging around, our airport should be coming into view. Should be coming into view here pretty quick. I was spending too much time sightseeing and not necessarily paying attention to my flying like I should have been. And that should be, yeah. Let's see if we can get lined up here. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, as I was mentioning before, we're not going to build a base here today. We just wanted to get the aircraft here so that we would be here in the fall when I do the next air hauler video. And let's hit one more flap. Five hundred. Swinging around here. Might have gotten off course a bit here. Let's see if we can kind of get swung around. And Landing gear down, and then let's swing around here. And there's our runway. Let's see if we can get lined up on it Minimums. here. Yeah, not the most uh, picture perfect flight or landing. And I was, I was too busy uh, sightseeing for us. Okay, there we go. We're lined up. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Okay. Thirty. Twenty. 10. There we go. And we'll catch the next taxiway. Well, it wasn't the most picture perfect coming in, but we got landed. It was fairly smooth landing too, actually. Not too bad. So Laramie uh, is, I don't know if I mentioned it, 7,200 foot elevation, uh, and it is population of about 30 to 32,000. And I think that that's mostly in the wintertime when all the students are here.
So it's a nice little uh, community. It's nice and quiet. Not a lot of uh, population. I mean, it's just, which is uh, what I like. All right. Let's uh, taxi over to where I usually pull in and park here. I better slow down a little bit. Yeah, I know. We are crossing the active runway. I'm not going to pay much attention to that. And we're going to pull into those buildings right over there. Could have taken that other taxiway and come in, but this is, the, is just as easy to cruise on down through here. And that taxiway takes you out to the uh, active runway. We're just going to cruise in. We're not going to pull all the way up to where they want me to park. I'm just going to pull in right here. And I think this is good right here. Okay. So let's do something real quick here. Uh, put our parking brake on and shut down. Okay, we are going to just hop outside the cab here real quick so you can kind of get a view of the airport. Yeah, it's just a regional airport. Uh, there's some commodities here. We're not going to probably put any factories in here, but it is a strategic location. I'll show you on the map over in Air Hauler uh, about the strategic locations. But as far as the terrain and everything... This is where the city is at over here, uh, over in this area. And those are the uh, hills that we crossed over coming over from Cheyenne. All right. Well, that's here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We made it from Cheyenne over to Laramie. I'm going to hop back over into Air Hauler, and I will see you over there. Okay, we are back over here in Air Hauler. I am going to close out. So there's obviously we have nothing on board. Our fuel uh, is still pretty good. We managed to burn some of that down. So we're going to click OK. Uh, and we're going to finish flight monitoring. And we had it. The landing was good. It was just the approach was uh, uh, pretty shoddy this time around. Normally, I'm a lot better on that. But I was too busy uh, trying to sight seat for you all. So let's click that OK. And we're closed out there. So I'll show you operational wise or here on the available cargo area. We were here. Let's uh, refresh this. Uh, we are now here in Laramie. So this is Alamosa. And this is Pocatello. So you can see base wise, maybe put it up in Casper might have been a little better, but it's my hometown. I got to put a base here, right? So strategically, it's still not going to be too bad. It's maybe a little close to Alamosa, but not bad. And then the plan is ultimately is to put a big base in at Kansas City because that, if you look at 
the U.S. You can kind of see that that's kind of in the center of the country. And my ultimate plan is to be able to haul cargo, any on those long hauls, bring them over to Kansas City and transfer them there and have them delivered on out. But we'll see how that goes. That's kind of the plan anyway. All right. So let's see. There was one more thing I wanted to mention since we're not opening a base here, but we do need to go into bases. I did add capacity on my El Paso base. We, you can see, <coughs> excuse me, that it's instead of 5,000 pounds, I upped it to uh, 10,000 pounds just because of the amount of commodities I'm sometimes going to have to deal with here with the three different factories. So if you add capacity, you can do it just like this, and it's $1,563 per 1,000 pounds. So it's not all that expensive to add base capacity if you need it. So let's cancel out of this. And I think that's going to wrap it up on everything that I had to talk about today. Again, uh, the next air hauler mission is going to be in September, and uh, that's going to be about mid-September after I get back from Alaska. So we'll see how the finances and everything looks when we uh, log back in. Okay, well, that's going to wrap this up. All you uh, air hauler and cargo haulers out there, if you like this uh, episode, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps out the video. And uh, please subscribe. That'll really help out the channel. And be sure to watch my summer videos uh, throughout the summer. That'll help them out a lot. It's not going to be air hauler, but I think you might enjoy them as well. Uh, okay. Well, oh, and ring that bell. It'll let you know when I'm uploading new videos. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.